We stand on the threshold of a new era when ancient wisdom and modern science meet. We have cracked the code of life and can now read its secrets. Secrets with the power to change who we are. Secrets hidden for four billion years. is among the most exquisite of life's creations and one of the most curious. Human curiosity about the way the world works has revealed many of its secrets and has given us the ability, through our science and technology, to change the world to suit our needs. But one secret has remained, the secret of life itself. Now that secret too is yielding to our curiosity and we are on the brink of ultimate power, the power to change ourselves. Today's babies are entering a brave new world. I'm a biologist and like most of my colleagues, I'm still stunned at the astonishing power that's suddenly been put into our hands. Stunned, excited, and a little nervous. The discoveries now being made daily in laboratories around the world are uncovering the most intimate details of how life works. The result is a revolution in medicine that is changing our whole approach to the prevention and treatment of major diseases. But these same discoveries also mean we can alter, even redesign living creatures, ourselves included, raising unprecedented questions about how and whether we should use the new powers we now possess. Join me as we explore the secret of life and find out why life will never be the same. What makes living things so unlike non-living things? How is life able to flourish almost everywhere in astonishing diversity? How does life pass on its essence from generation to generation? People making people, beetles, beetles. Though I didn't know it then, even as I was asking these questions, scientists were finding that their answer lay in a single thread that's at the core of every living thing, a thread called DNA. Not too impressive like this, is it? But if I could unravel all the DNA in my body and stretch it out, it would reach to the sun and back over a hundred times. But it's not just how long and thin it is that makes DNA remarkable. It's the fact that it carries invisibly within itself the information to make everything alive. Only 10 years after scientists realized DNA carries life's instructions, James Watson and Francis Crick discovered how, within its now famous double helix. The instructions are written in a code that uses the four chemicals DNA is made of, known by their initials C, G, A, and T. And now it's obvious why DNA is so long. It takes an awful lot of letters to spell out a living thing. To get a sense of how many, we printed out on paper all the A's, T's, G's and C's needed to build and operate a human being. This page has 3,000 letters on it. And this drawer has over 50,000 pages in it.
and it's only one drawer in what is, in effect, an immense archive of information. It contains, all told, some two million pages and some six billion letters. All this to spell out you or me. Has this entire set of instructions packed away in its nucleus, written in long strands of DNA. But DNA doesn't just spell out people. The double helix carries the recipe for everything else alive and everything that's ever lived. Back to the moment life began. That moment occurred some four billion years ago, in a place Charles Darwin surmised must have been a warm little pond, a cozy cradle on the primitive earth. Today, there's a very different idea of life born amid hellfire and brimstone. Bacteria that live without oxygen, in temperatures at or above boiling point, and that eat sulfur. These tiny creatures may be the closest living relatives of what were once the ancestors of us all, and within them, still carrying the instructions that allowed our ancestors to thrive, is DNA. Because DNA doesn't just contain life's instructions, it's able, by unwinding and using each of its two strands as the template for a new partner, to pass those instructions on. As one generation gives way to the next, the instructions continue. Only extinction interrupts the unbroken chain, and sometimes, not even then. The possibility of retrieving the starting point is amber, here on display at the annual gem show in Washington, D.C. 1990, from a mine in South America came a piece of amber containing the fossilized remains of a prehistoric mosquito, one of many that had fed upon the blood of dinosaurs. From the DNA in that blood, science was able to recreate those giants. And for the first time, man and dinosaur shared the earth. It happened at a place called Jurassic Park. A million years old. The blood meal right here could well represent that of a dinosaur. So it's very exciting to speculate on the ability of sequencing that cell. If we were so lucky as to find a dinosaur cell that was complete. Today in laboratories all over the world, a multi-billion dollar project is underway to read every single letter of the six billion it takes to encode a human being. The archive we've built to hold these letters printed out on paper shows the scale of the task, equivalent to reading through some two million pages, each containing 3,000 letters. The instructions are carried in the order of the letters. This page, for instance, spells out the message to make the material of my fingernails. It's a gene, and there are genes, sets of instructions, for telling the body how to assemble all the things it's made of. These include things you can see, like the pigment that used to make my hair black, and things you can't see, like the enzymes that allow me to digest my morning breakfast. Until just a few years ago, all the information contained in the human DNA archive was secret. Its code was indecipherable. But today it has a name, the human genome. And it's being read page after page after page. <laughs> 